So before we get into giving you time to have conversations in your groups about, well, what does this topic really mean to us, I'm going to hand you over to Rebecca just to give us a bit of an introduction about what the scope of the topic is all about. Uh, <clears throat> thanks and uh, lovely to see you all here and we're going to be together for a little while really getting into the meat of this topic so um, I'm very happy to have you with us. Um, I am biased but I know what's coming and it is one of the most interesting areas that we're going to consider so um, I'm really happy to be working with you on it. Um, all I'm going to do now is run through what will happen today and tomorrow on this topic and, and, and then we're going to um, do some discussion and then hear from our speakers. So the main thing we're going to look at in this group is how to get to zero carbon in the home. So the things we're including within this are um, firstly... Um, ways of making homes more energy efficient. That is, ways of using less energy by being more efficient about the way we use energy, and that will be explained to you. Um, the second thing is by changes that we might, wait, we might make to the way that we live in our, in our homes. Um, the third thing we're going to look at is how you phase out fossil fuels, that's oil, gas and coal, um, which we currently use quite a lot for heating and uh, cooking. And uh, we're going to have a deep dive into zero carbon heating options because, as you will have heard um, so far um, from, from comments that different speakers have made, um, this, is, this is a really tricksy area, how we, um, how we move to zero carbon heating. So that's something we're going to spend quite a lot of time on. I'll just tell you what isn't included, partly because there are overlaps and there's never an ideal way of dividing up these topics. So the first thing that we're not looking at in a lot of depth is generating electricity. So we had, we had those talks from uh, uh, Jim and Jenny this morning who introduced some of the ways that we can uh, generate electricity. And um, we're not going to be talking about that in detail. But what I would just point out is that, as you'll have seen, there are ways of generating electricity at household level, and particularly solar panels, which you'll have seen on roofs, which can feed in to help the energy um, use in that house and which can also go into the electricity grid. So there are ways in which you can generate electricity at home. Um, those will be mentioned, but we don't have a specific speaker on it. Um, we're not looking about trans on transport because that's another group, but again, there are some overlaps, really interesting overlaps around uh, if we move to electric vehicles, how we charge electric vehicles, um, how, you know, how, how they take their power, how you plug them in and how that fits into the sort of home energy system, if you like. So that's another interesting area that we might touch on, um, but we're not looking at wider transport issues. And we're not looking at uh, food or things that we buy or use. Um, the exception to that is we are thinking about, uh, about appliances in the home which use electricity. So, um, you know, gadgets, phones, IT equipment, other um, electrical appliances in the home, things like washing machines, um, that sort of thing. So we will be talking about those a little bit, but in terms of their um, electricity use um, rather than um, the products themselves. So there's a little bit of overlap there. Um, this is what you're going to get speakers on, but I would, you know, the, the whole point of this is to try and make connections. So if there are connections to be made between what we're talking about today and some of the stuff that you heard earlier about electricity generation or um, hydrogen or carbon capture, they all link up. So I, I would encourage you to make those connections wherever possible and to ask questions about those. Looking at how our discussions are structured, Broadly speaking, we're going to start with the question of what needs to happen, and then we're going to move on to how it could happen. Okay, so looking at first at what needs to happen, um, this is an overview of the changes that will be needed to our homes if we're going to phase out carbon emissions, and how is who will bring that about, what people and organisations might be able to help us do that. So the first panel um, you'll hear... You'll hear from speakers firstly about making homes more energy efficient, trying to get, trying to get them to be as efficient as possible and use as little um, electricity and heating as we can. Um, we'll also look at reducing demand, um, maybe through changing the way that we live in our houses, um, maybe through changing or, or improving the technologies that we use. 
And then we're going to have this deep dive on heating and look at different technologies that can be used for heating on hot water. And those include things like heat pumps and hydrogen boilers. And don't worry if you have no idea what a hydrogen boiler is at this stage, um, or a heat pump for that matter, because we're going to go into some detail about what those technologies are, and you'll have some pictures as well about what they look like. So that is essentially what needs to happen. And, and then we will have our second panel, which looks essentially at um, how this could be brought about. So in, by, the time, by the end of the first panel, you will have an idea of how our homes need to change. And in the second panel, you're going to be presented with a whole range of speakers um, telling you the different ways in which we could, we could achieve those changes. So this panel is tomorrow morning. Um, but the kinds of perspectives you'll hear from are um, what could be done through uh, local authorities? What kind of strategies could local authorities like cities um, play? What role could they play in making our, getting our homes to zero carbon? And you'll have some examples of cities and local areas that have done some really good stuff already. And you'll have an idea of what, um, what will happen, what could happen in the future. We're going to be hearing from a speaker from a community organisation who will say what uh, what community groups can do and what's called non-profit organisations, which are essentially organisations that provide a service but don't make a profit out of it, that. They reinvest that profit into the community. So we'll look and, and, and you can get an idea of whether you think that's an approach that might be useful um, to move towards zero carbon homes. We're going to look at the role of businesses. Um, both what, what services business can offer to help us do this and also what support they need um, in, in order to do that. And we're going to look particularly at a new approach which we're calling heat as a service. Um, we'll explain what that is, but it's basically rather than selling you gas, it's selling heat, it's selling you the service of heating your home. So again, we'll go into a lot more detail of that, so um, you know, it will be explained in full. All those speakers will offer what they will, will, will sort of set out their store for what they can offer to get our homes to zero carbon. And they will also say what they would need from other actors in order to bring that about. So what they would want government to do, um, what role there might be for businesses and what they would expect of us all as people who live in houses. So they will, uh, and they will talk particularly, given that you're advising parliament and government, they will look particularly at what they would want government to do for their approach to work. Right across this theme, is our questions around fairness and consumer protection. Because when you're talking about changes to people's, uh, people's homes, um, it's obviously really important to consider um, the circumstances of people living in their homes. If they're asked to make changes, can they afford to make those changes? If prices change, can they afford that? How do you help people who might be vulnerable because they have particular needs for um, heating? So there's lots of questions around vulnerability, um, fairness and consumer protection. Consumer protection, how do you know that, you, you know, if you're being sold new equipment, how do you know that that's um, fair? Um, and that is, it, how, how do you know that, that you're, you're not being conned when you're sold something? So we've, we've addressed fairness and consumer protection in two ways. Um, the first thing is we've asked all our speakers um, in panel two um, to talk specifically about how, how under their approach that they would ensure fairness and consumer protection. And we've also got a separate speaker who will cover those issues directly. So that should be a theme running through it. That is like a whistle-stop tour of what we're going to be looking at. I've just condensed it all into less than 10 minutes. Um, but there'll be a lot of stuff there that um, it hasn't been explained fully yet, but that will evolve as we unpack it. We just wanted to give you an overview at the start of what we'll be doing together, both this weekend and in future sessions. Thank you.